Good evening, everybody. Today we're going to talk about H-1B extensions beyond six years. Um, it's a basic rule that started that, hey, you can extend your uh, H-1B beyond six years if you have advanced in the green card process to a certain level and you get the benefit of going beyond six years on H-1B. But there were so many exceptions built into it and so many additional rules that it got complicated. Yeah. Quite complicated. Uh, I'm Sam Shehab with the law firm Sam Shehab & Associates. I am Brian Burke, also with Sam Shehab & Associates. And we're going to break it down for you and trying to uh, demystify the H-1B beyond six years. So let's start with the baseline, Brian. Yeah. Baseline is everybody uh, get your H-1B cap approved, you get six years. What is six years? It's 365 days in a year times six equals 2190 days. Um, they only count the days you are physically present inside the United States. So tick off a day every day, you know, you're partially in the United States. So if you're in the United States for five hours that day, you, you tick off a day. Yeah. They don't count the days you're outside the country. Yes. Yeah. Um, if you go on a vacation for 30 days, you subtract 30 days. Yeah. The day you're in the U.S., if you enter the United States, let's say at 11 p.m., that's one full day. If you leave the U.S. at 1 o'clock in the morning, for example, that's one full day uh, in the U.S. Yeah. So you need to count those days carefully. And once you hit 2190, you've run out of H-1B time. That's the maximum. And you're required by law to be outside the United States for one full year to be entitled to apply again in the lottery for a new six years. Yeah. Now, if you use two, two years or, let's say, 300 days or 600 days and you left the country for three, four years, you could come back to the U.S. and use up the remaining. Yeah. Uh, so that bank is indefinite, available for you, but the burden proof is on you to prove how many days you're here in the U.S. Yeah. So that's the basic rule, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, use the time, you're in the United States. Yeah. yeah. So now, when do you get beyond six years? More than 2,190 uh, days. When do you get that? So yeah. you get it if the green card process, you file for a green card process, and the green card process develop to a certain point. And they break down the rules to two buckets. Uh, extension beyond six years for three, up to three additional years, and then extension beyond six years for one year at a time. And we're gonna separate those and explain them separately. Let's start with the extension beyond six years for a maximum of three years at a time. Yeah. When do we get that, Brian? So that is when you have an I-140 approval. When you have an I-140 approval notice to your name, you can file an H-1B um, case, just like any other one, and USCIS will be happy to approve you for an additional three years beyond, um, beyond six years. And I should note that you can do that repeatedly. You know, you can do three years, if you need another three years, you can do that as well. In that case, though, the priority date should not be current yes. in your situation. So yeah. if the priority date is not current, plus, I-140 approved equals yeah. extension beyond six years for up to three year increments. Once your priority date is current, uh, they say, no, you can't do that unless you file form I-485. Once you had filed I-485, you know, you and your priority date's current, you'll give them a copy of your I-485 receipt notice, you'll give them your I-140 approval notice, and then they'll be happy to approve your HMB again for another three years. So priority date is current plus I-140 approved plus I-485 filed equals extension beyond three years. I like that math, yes. Perfect. Now, let's jump on the second bucket, which is when does the government is willing to extend your H-1B for one year increments only, not three year increments? Um, the first one is when your green card application has been pending for a year, but you run out of H-1B time, they're willing to give you one year at a time. So you don't have an I-140 approved yet. Let's assume the labor certification has been pending for now one year, yeah. uh, and you run out of H-1B time, the government is willing yeah. to give you. We should clarify by what you mean by pending. So it's not just like the labor certification's in process, they filed the prevailing wage or it's in recruitment. You must have filed that labor certification. So for most people, they get an I-140 through labor certification. And basically, the date you file that I one, excuse me, that labor certification, that perm labor certification, if that's more than one year before you've reached the H one B six year maximum, that's an event that might allow you to extend your H one B status in one year increments beyond six years. The second scenario is if the I one forty is approved, 
but the priority date is current, but for some reason you haven't or unable to file the adjustment of status for whatever reason, they will, they're willing to give you one year extension at a time if the priority date is current. Yes. Uh, and that's the second scenario in which you get one year increment is if the I-140 approved plus priority date is current plus I-45 not filed equals there's an asterisk on that, Sam. Sam, if your I if your I one forty priority date is current, um, they will only allow you a year to file adjustments. To, uh, excuse me, file H one B extensions. Basically, they have a rule that says, if your I one forty priority date has been current for uh, less than a year, we will allow you those one year extensions. If you have been current for more than one uh, one year, we won't allow you those one year extensions anymore. So, so in that in that scenario, there's a window. Yeah. Which you can f you can ask for the one year at a time extension is that the priority date has not been current for more than one year. It has to be yeah. less than one year. Yeah, I guess the point of both these policies is they basically try to funnel you off of H one B into filing that I forty five because the bottom line is they don't allow you to stay on H one B forever. Yes. Now there is that little rule that says if the priority date has been current for more than one year and you haven't filed your I forty five, come and explain to us why that happened, and you have to prove circumstances beyond your control for them to allow a one-year H-1B extension at a time. And that's kind of a very narrow area. Yeah. I wouldn't want to hang my hat on that one. On, on that one, exactly. Yeah. Now, that's the second bucket we talked about is the one-year increment. Now, the only scenario that we want to talk about before we conclude this is that the I-140 has been approved for, let's say, uh, 180 days or more, yeah. and the employer, for whatever reason, withdraws this H-1B. Yeah. When your I-140 is approved for more than 180 days, you know, your employer is at any time free to withdraw that I-140. However, legally, it doesn't take away your ability to use that I-140 to extend your H-1B status. I-140 approved for more than 180 days, always good for extending your H-1B status. Yes. And these are the rules on H-1B extension beyond six years. Now, there are little nuances here and there that we haven't covered that gets really complicated, but that give you kind of an overview of the beyond six years. Thank you for listening. Have a great evening.